I think the conference Youth 2.0 has been a really um, thoughtful interdisciplinary opportunity to think about children, youth and social media. And yes, there are all kinds of conferences going on, but uh, this one draws on a community of scholars, largely within Europe, also from the States, who have developed a common framework, I think, who are looking at the risks as well as the opportunities, who are doing high quality academic research, but also with an eye to the uh, policy implications and practical consequences, and to really uh, seek a common understanding about the, both the, the shared feature of young people's social media use, but also the cultural specificities. I think it's easy for those of us who are older, looking from the outside, to imagine that many things are going wrong in young people's social media use. They have no sense of privacy, they are all bullying each other, they are um, always staring at a screen and never talking face to face. Um, I think the research is becoming very uh, good at identifying the different contexts, when the, the contexts that might lead young people to um, tell everything to the world, but also the ways in which they do still maintain their privacy, or the reasons why they might really prefer um, to have a conversation via the internet rather than face to face. It might be a good reason about um, not being embarrassed or um, managing an interaction well. So um, yeah, I think we learned a lot about the young people's values as they try to manage their own relationships, ethically or not ethically. In the early days of research on social media or new media, there was a kind of fascination with the, the websites, with the technology. Now I think we have really moved beyond that. So the interest is in a way a very long-standing interest with how young people develop, form identity, build relationships, you know, develop uh, self-esteem and expertise. Um, what's interesting about the media is, yes, they're just a tool for doing things, but they're not neutral. Uh, they are um, owned by big companies. They uh, are very often owned by companies headquartered in a country other than our own. They, um, they are run for profit. So a lot of the uh, interest in uh, media and digital literacy in the conference was about helping young people understand what happens to their data, who owns their images, um, how a certain profit motive uh, generates what comes up in a search engine, not the desire for knowledge. Uh, so they are just tools, but they're not neutral tools. The means of protest that people use, or the means of communication, tells you something about their resources and what they can manage. And there are cultures where um, there is no paper, but there is radio, for example. Or there are cultures where there is mobile, but no video. I mean, I think it, it matters what means people have at their disposal. Yes, of course, the, uh, the bigger purpose that they try to use the communication for matters. But what we often see with um, political protest and what we often see also with young people is working around the kind of the standard controlled tools in order to find other tools. So then it is precisely the cheap paper stuck on the wall that is the chosen medium of both youth and political protesters because they don't have access to the expense. So then they have to arrange their message differently, say something in a different style. Perhaps I should qualify what I want in my dream project because it isn't just the statistics of who does what with which medium, but what is happening to, are, are, are our values changing? Is our concept of privacy changing? Is our definition of a friend changing when a site offers 200 or 500 friends? Um, what do we now remember when all our photographs and conversations are on a website. Um, how do we feel about our personal boundaries or making and authoring? I think it's, the, it's how concepts and values are changing that is so hard to track. So maybe I need a longitudinal, large-scale, qualitative study. The one thing that is most striking in the field of youth studies is how often adults feel that they know already what young people think and feel without talking to them. And the most important message in this field is always to do the research that engages the young people.